Hi, I'm Julie Chikiro, co-chair of the International Dysphagia Diet Standardisation Initiative. We call it IDSI for short. I'm also the Australian IDSI Project Officer. IDSI is an international group that runs on a not-for-profit basis. IDSI is run by 12 volunteers with a diverse range of clinical and technical expertise from across the globe. IDSI receives industry sponsorship that supports the website, meetings, webinars and other running costs. Sponsors have no input into the content or running of ITSI. This video is designed to help explain what ITSI is and what it means for how we describe thick drinks and texture modified food in Australia. It provides video x-rays to explain why thick drinks and texture modified foods are needed for people with chewing and swallowing problems. For Australia I'll explain two of our biggest changes, the green colour label change to be used for extremely thick drinks and why bread is no longer included on a soft diet. The ITSI framework came together after assembling a multidisciplinary international board to examine existing national standards, a systematic review of evidence for the use of thick drinks and texture modified food, and input from more than 3,000 people from 57 countries around the world. ITSI is a global standardised framework that provides terminology and definitions for texture modified food and thick drinks. There are eight levels from zero to seven to help describe a change in food and drink textures. You'll notice at level three and level four there is one colour and one number but different labels for the foods and drinks. The foods and drinks at level three share the same texture qualities and the same is true for level four. That's why they share the same colour and the same number. But just because a person needs moderately thick drinks doesn't mean they'll need liquidised food. Please ask your speech pathologist for more information. The speech pathologist will work out the food level and drink level that's safe for people with chewing and swallowing difficulties. A dietitian will work out what foods and drinks are needed to meet the person's nutrition and hydration needs. The ITSI framework is used for people of all ages, in all settings and all cultures. It's a colour coded model where the colours have been specially chosen to make sure that people with colour blindness can use them. The labels have been chosen to be culturally neutral to make them easier for translation into languages other than English. You can describe the levels by using labels, colours and the number. ITSI recommends that you use at least two of the three ways of describing the levels for safety. In 2016, the ITSI framework was formally endorsed by the Dietitians Association of Australia, Speech Pathology Australia and the Institute of Hospitality and Healthcare with implementation on 1 May 2019. Adoption of the ITSI framework is voluntary, just as the adoption of the national terminology in 2007 has been voluntary. Implementation has been supported by the Australian ITSI Steering Committee convened at the end of 2016. It included representation from ITSI International, the Dietitians Association of Australia, Speech Pathology Australia and the Institute of Hospitality and Healthcare and industry representation from Flavour Creations, Precise Thicken and Nestle Health Science. So why are we changing from national terminology to international terminology? Well the Australian terminology published in 2007 is now more than 10 years old. And we also have a lot of new information about the number of food texture levels and drink thickness levels that clinicians use. And we also needed a way to test the thick drinks and texture modified foods that's easily accessible rather than just testing that's found in laboratories. There's a lot of confusion when we just use descriptions of foods or drinks. When I say soft, what does that mean to you? When you say thick, how thick do you mean? you can see that it can be a bit confusing. ITSI uses measurements that are designed to minimise the need for personal subjective judgement. The tests are quick, easy and reliable and can all be done in 10 seconds or less. And while it's possible to perform these tests at any time, they won't be needed every time. ITSI testing is most helpful when you're learning about the framework, when you're doing spot checks like auditing or when you're training new people or developing new recipes. Let's start with the drinks. Why do we need thick drinks? When we swallow it moves quickly through our mouth and down our throat. In fact it happens so quickly we don't even think about it. 
If we look at this x-ray video, we can see there's a lot of drink sitting in the throat. And then all of a sudden we notice a bit trickle down and it goes into the airway. That leads down into the lungs and then the person starts coughing. Even though there's coughing, there's still drink that's going down the wrong way into their lungs. If we watch the second video, we can see that this person's also having trouble with their drink. A lot of it is in their throat and we can't see that without the help of the x-ray. Notice that some of the drink also goes down the wrong way, but this time there's no coughing. Sometimes people don't cough when it goes down the wrong way. This is called silent aspiration. In Australia, speech pathologists diagnose and manage swallowing problems. We know that when we make drinks thicker, they flow more slowly and seem to hold together a bit better to allow better control. There are different levels of drink thickness. Some people only need their drinks a bit thicker to manage it safely and swallow everything so it goes to their stomach, while others need their drinks to be quite a bit thicker. Here we show the changes for Australia for the colours, the labels and the numbers. You can see we have a change to our numbering system, so it's a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Our labels essentially stay the same. And now we have slightly thick, mildly thick, moderately thick and extremely thick. Slightly thick is a new level. It's been used for many years by clinicians who treat babies so that it's a thickness level that will flow through an infant teat. However, slightly thick liquids has also been used for adults, most often in the palliative care setting. You'll notice that we have a change to the colour. Especially note the change to extremely thick, that it is a green colour. The colour changes have come about so that we can make the colours used for IDSI accessible for people with kinds of colour blindness. IDSI uses the IDSI flow test. The flow test was designed to test liquids the way they move when they're swallowed. You use a 10 milliliter syringe to do the testing. It's important to make sure that you have the right syringe. You can check this really easily. Measure from the 0 to the 10 milliliter line with a ruler. That measurement should be 61.5 millimetres. If you've got that, you've got the syringe and you're ready to start testing. And testing is very simple. Remove the plunger from the syringe and put your finger over the base of the syringe. Add 10 millilitres, making sure to measure it carefully. Once you're ready, start a timer and let the liquid flow for 10 seconds. At the end of 10 seconds, put your finger back over the end of the nozzle and measure how much is left. For slightly thick fluids, we'll have between 1 and 4 millilitres remaining. For mildly thick liquids, there are between 4 and 8 mils remaining after 10 seconds of flow. And for moderately thick drinks and liquidised food, there is between 8 and 10 millilitres remaining after 10 seconds of flow. When using the IDSI flow test, if you only get one or two drips from the syringe or you have nothing flowing out of the syringe in 10 seconds, then you move to the IDSI fork drip test. Take a cup of the liquid and lift a dinner fork through it. If it dollops, flows or drips continuously through the fork, it is a level 3 moderately thick drink or liquidised food. If the sample can be scooped up and has a mound above the fork and a small tail below so that you could eat it with a fork, it is a level 4 extremely thick drink or level 4 pureed food. Level 4 extremely thick drinks and pureed food are smooth without lumps. They don't require any chewing. You should just be able to put them straight into your mouth and swallow them down. Again you'll notice that there is the same number and colour but two different labels here. And just because someone's on an extremely thick drink doesn't mean they'll need pureed food. Please check with the speech pathologist. 
In addition to the fork drip test, we need to make sure that food's not sticky. Sticky foods have been shown to be a choking risk on autopsy reports. We can check whether the food is sticky by using a teaspoon in the Itsy Spoon Tilt Test. Take a spoonful of puree or extremely thick food and tilt the spoon on its side. It should either slide straight off or slide off without a, with a slight flick of your wrist. Look at the top image of the thick Greek yogurt and notice how it comes off the teaspoon. While there's a small amount of residue on the teaspoon, we can still see the majority of the teaspoon through the residue. See how different the sample on the bottom is. This is peanut butter. The spoon could be turned completely upside down and the peanut butter will still stick to the spoon. Even after a lot of flicking of the wrist, the spoon still has a lot of residue. This is too sticky and poses a choking risk. It could get stuck to the roof of the mouth, the teeth or the cheeks and fall down into the airway when the person takes a breath, talks, laughs or changes position. All foods for people with chewing and swallowing problems need to be moist and they should not be sticky. Here's an example of the spoon tilt test in action. Notice how the first two examples come easily off the spoon. The third example is too sticky. It takes a lot of wrist movement to dislodge the sample. This would be an unsafe texture for someone with chewing and swallowing problems. Let's have a look at the names we've been using in Australia for texture modified foods and what they're called in the IDSI framework. We can see there's a new liquidized level at level 3. And then we have level 4 pureed, level 5 minced and moist, level 6 soft and bite sized, level 7 easy to chew and level 7 regular. We move away from letters like texture A to numbers and there's a new texture level called transitional foods that I'll tell you about in a moment. So why do we need all of these different food textures? Well a little bit like we can drink without giving it a second thought, the same thing happens when we eat. Let's look at an x-ray swallow of a healthy person chewing some food and swallowing it down. Notice how quickly their chewing is, how well they open and close their jaw, and the food is all collected into a ball and it's swallowed down very quickly. Now let's look at some x-rays of people who have chewing problems. In the first x-ray, notice how the food is being chewed at the front of the mouth rather than on the back teeth. The jaw's not opening very wide and if you look carefully you can see that little bits of food are falling over the back of the tongue and falling even further into the throat right near where the opening to the airway is and that's before the person has swallowed. All it would take is for someone to talk, laugh or take a breath and those little pieces could go into the airway. Now let's have a look at the second video. Sometimes people have so much trouble chewing that they don't chew, they simply swallow pieces of food whole. And rather than using their tongue to move it back, they tip their head back, just like you might do for CPR resuscitation. So essentially they're opening it and making their airway more easily accessible. Watch how that food piece goes down. And now it's stuck in their airway. Speech pathologists check the chewing skills of people to work out what food texture is safest for them to chew and swallow to reduce the risk of them choking. So this is our level 5 Itsy Minced and Moist Diet. It looks like food that has been minced down to minimise the amount of chewing that's needed. The food pieces should be soft enough that you could squash them easily with your tongue against the roof of your mouth. You can check whether the food pieces are small enough by using a dinner fork. The gaps between the prongs of a standard dinner fork measure 4 millimetres and 4 millimetres is the minced and moist particle size for adults while 2 millimetres is the food piece size for children. In the picture the size of the couscous is okay for adults. The couscous would need to be mixed well with the minced meat though before giving it to a person to eat so that all of the food is moist. All foods need to be the right texture when they're being served to the person with a chewing or swallowing problem. Here are some examples of what the 4mm and 2mm minced and moist foods look like. But remember, please find ways to make it look delicious. 
At level 6 we have soft and bite sized food and it's designed to mimic a bite of food. It's 1.5 by 1.5 centimetres for adults and 8 millimetres by 8 millimetres for children. The 1.5 by 1.5 centimetres is about the size of an adult thumbnail and the 8 millimetres by 8 millimetres is about the size of an adult's pinky fingernail. These sizes have been chosen so to minimise the risk that the food pieces will get stuck in the airway if they accidentally go down the wrong way. Level 6 soft and bite sized sh food should also be soft enough that when you press a dinner fork down onto it with enough pressure that your thumbnail blanches to white that the food will break apart and not come back together when you lift the fork. There's no bread, sandwiches or toast on level 6 soft and bite sized diets because these foods have caused so many choking deaths and are reported in autopsy and coroner's reports. Bread looks soft but it isn't. It has a lot of fibres and you need very good chewing skills to break it down. You can't fork mash bread. ITSI recognises that sandwiches are really important to people and so they've developed a way to make an ITSI minced and moist sandwich using breadcrumbs that have been moistened, an appropriate soft filling and more breadcrumbs that have been moistened on top. There's a short three minute video that you can watch on the ITSI YouTube channel. At level 7 we have level 7 easy to chew. This is for people who prefer or need their food to be soft and tender but don't need the food cut into bite sized pieces. If there's an increased risk of choking, ITSI recommends level 6 soft and bite sized or lower ITSI levels though. If the person needs supervision to eat safely, extra care, professional assessment and written guidance is needed before using level 7 easy to chew. Use the side of a fork to check that the food is tender enough for level 7 easy to chew. It should be possible to break the food into smaller pieces or flake it apart just using the side of a fork. Level 7 regular has no particle size restrictions. It includes normal everyday foods of various textures that are appropriate for the person's age and developmental needs. Biting and chewing is necessary as well as the ability to manage a whole range of different types of food. Transitional foods are ones where the food starts as a solid and changes to a texture that's easy to chew or swallow when we add moisture or heat. For example ice cream wafers or scotch finger biscuits become very easy to chew when they're softened with the saliva. Ice chips and ice cream soften and become easy to swallow as well. These textures are often used by speech pathologists to help with therapy to learn or relearn to chew. For babies and children it's really important that food pieces are just the right size for their mouths and throat. I think we're all very well aware of the choking risks that are associated with pieces of food that are too large. We change from child food size pieces to the adult food piece sizes when children grow and this is most often during puberty but you can also check with your doctor to see if your child has grown enough to safely manage the adult food pea sizes without choking risk. Even though we know that young children have a high risk of choking on food, it's probably less well known that as we get older choking risk again increases. In fact the incidence of choking in people over the age of 65 is seven times higher than it is for children aged one to four years of age. Things that increase choking risk include swallowing problems, missing teeth and eating and drinking behaviours like eating too quickly, overfilling the mouth or swallowing without chewing food properly. While it's been common to see examples of foods to include and foods to avoid on texture modified diets, it's better to use the ITSI testing methods to work out whether the food that day is going to be safe for the person to eat. Always check food suitability using the ITSI testing methods. ITSI has a range of resources to help you. If you're just getting started, take an average meal and drink and use the ITSI testing methods to see what ITSI levels you've got. The ITSI website includes audit sheets to help make this easier for you. All of the resources on the website are free for you to use and download. Once you've audited your food or drink, if it's not quite right, rather than not using it, see how it can be changed to make it safe. For example, if the mashed potato is too sticky, Try adding some milk, butter, cream or oil to remove the stickiness. If the food is too hard, see if it can be cooked in a different way or with a different cut of meat to make it soft so that it passes the ITSI fork pressure test. 
talk with chefs, cooks and dietitians. Work with your dietitian to make sure that the food you have also meets your nutritional needs. ITSI has also recorded webinars that you can watch. Visit the ITSI YouTube channel via our resources tab. There are lots of great webinars that are specific to Australia and also others from around the world. Also on the ITSI resources tab you'll find consumer handouts. There's a handout for each of the ITSI levels and adults and also for children. These are also free to download. Australia is a proud multicultural country. If you're looking for a language other than English, please visit the ITSI website and look at our translations tab. The ITSI framework is translated into languages other than English by volunteers from around the world. On the resources tab of the website, you can also click on the country specific resources to see Australian resources. And here you'll find the Australian ITSI poster, the green label change for thick drinks and the no bread for level 6 soft and bite sized diet posters. You're welcome to download the posters and take them to your local printer for printing. ITSI also has a free app that's available on both iOS, Apple and Google Play platforms. Once the app is downloaded you don't need continued access to Wi-Fi or data. The videos are embedded in the app. You can take ITSI and the whole framework on the go in your pocket making it easier to explain it to others. The ITSI website is always being updated and new resources are being added. The ITSI website and resource development are paid for by funding from our industry sponsors. However, ITSI has always been run by a board of volunteers. All of the board members have day jobs and volunteer their time for ITSI for free. In Australia, you'll start to see new industry labels from May 2019. It might take a little bit of time for labels to change to ITSI. If you have any questions about when your food and drink labels might change, please contact your manufacturer directly. In the meantime, you can also download images that can be printed onto stickers of old labels. And if you have any questions or need any extra information, please contact me on email australia at idsi.org. Thanks.